Welcome back to Linda's Pantry. So today I'm going to make a tortellini dish and to, for the sauce I'm going to make a delicious roasted butternut squash sauce. And so it's super easy and it's really delicious and it has roasted red peppers and butternut squash and you do roast these in the oven. So. Um, it brings out all the natural sugars and sweetness and savory part of it. And so I hope it inspires you to stay with me and uh, watch how I make this. I'll try to keep it short and easy. And um, as always, guys, if you like what you see, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and uh, maybe repost it on your Facebook page and spread the word. And uh, down below in the description box, I'll leave a link to my Facebook page for Linda's Pantry. And you can go over there and join the conversation, see who I'm watching, see what I'm doing. It's been kind of slow over there lately because I've been so busy with uh, both jobs. But um, nonetheless, we're going to make this and I'm going to use some Wild Tree products. So I have my link to my Wild Tree website where you can go shop, become a rep, make some extra money yourself. It sure has come in handy this season. And okay. Let's go do this, because <laughs> I'm hungry. Okay guys, I'm glad you stayed along for this one because it really is a delicious recipe to share with your family and your friends. It's absolutely wonderful. And so, I've got my butternut squash here that I've cleaned out and I use a canning jar lid to scrape out all those seeds because they can be kind of sketchy to get out of there. Um, and I'll set that one aside for a second here. I want to show you how I take care of my washed bell peppers. And I bought a bunch of bell peppers at Costco because I'm going to make a stuffed bell pepper recipe for you here soon. And so I picked the ones that really didn't have a chance of standing up straight, even if I made a little spot here. So I'm going to use those. There's always that in the package. And those are the ones I usually roast. So I just take my knife and cut the cheek off, as it were. Sometimes you get in too deep, but now I can see where I'm at. And I don't have to do as much trimming to that. Okay? And I'm gonna go around this way. Because you don't really want that pith in there. It can be um, bitter, even in a red bell pepper. So then I can take and clean off the seeds. Any white pith that I see, I'm gonna carve that right out of there. That one's okay. This one has a little bit. I just take my paring knife to it. And this one, as you can see, this, this was my first cut. It had a little more pith than I thought it might have. So, get the seeds out. And those are ready for roasting. And the same thing on this one. I just cut the cheek right off that guy. And then I see where I'm at. And I try to get as much as I possibly can. I don't want to waste anything. Red bell peppers can be expensive. Um, they're absolutely my favorite out of all of them. Well, I don't know. I like Anaheim and jalapenos, and so I guess I like them all. But if I had to choose over a green bell pepper or a red bell pepper, um, I'd probably choose the red. Okay, and they're full of vitamin C. You guys, these peppers are so good for you. So, now I've got my peppers all ready to go. And I think I wanna to toss them in a little bowl. It'll make it easier to get everything seasoned and tossed. I'm preheating my little on-the-counter oven at 425 degrees. So, put this in here. Mm. Smells good. I love the smell of that capsaicin. And I'm just going to wipe my board down a little bit uh, so I don't get seeds in my garlic that I'm going to cut up here in a second. And so now what I'm going to do is I've got my Wild Tree Roasted Garlic Grapeseed Oil. And I did want to tell you, Joe, I know you were worried about this being open, but they have little caps on these spouts. I got these spouts at World Market, so I can drizzle. Um, I can, you know, pr be pretty careful with how much is coming out. Uh, but So I'm just going to drizzle down, oh, a teaspoon or so of that roasted garlic oil, and then um, toss that together with some tongs. Just 
make sure everything kind of gets coated because then I'm going to season them. Okay. This is kind of how I like to do it. I'm going to add a little bit more, make sure every, everybody's got some drizzle on. You could use olive oil. I choose to use the grapeseed oil because it has a 425 degree smoke temp, so I know it's safe to get in those high temperatures. And then I'm going to do some cracked black pepper because I want this dish layered really well for the sauce. And then some Himalayan pink salt. And because I'm going to use this in the dish as well, I'm going to put a, just a sprinkling of herbs de Provence. Mm. Yum. It already smells delicious. Okay. Now, I can put these down on my baking tray here. I've got a foil lined, parchment lined uh, baking sheet that goes with my on the counter oven. And so I'm just gonna put those down. And um, you can do them skin side up, skin side down. I'm not really that concerned with how they're placed at this point. The oil might pool if it's skin side uh, um, up, down. So we'll do them skin side up. How's that? Okay, so I've got half my tray with that. And then now I want to get my butternut squash ready. So I'm going to use this one. This half is a little bit bigger than this half. I'm going to use this half for this dish. And I'm going to roast that off. So now I want to... Go ahead and brush some of that with my brush or not. We should be doing it with our hands. Anyways, clean hands. Okay, uh, the olive or the grapeseed oil, um, the garlic grapeseed oil. I want to get inside the whole thing and the whole surface, the sides and everything. Okay, rinse my hands. We're going to season this up. Okay, same thing salt and pepper. Boy, I, sh I wish I could find a nice pepper grinder. This one, I think it's worn out. Okay, a little bit of Himalayan pink salt. You don't need much. And then just a sprinkling down here. And this one. I'm putting that side down. It's skin side up. So now we have our roast or our butternut squash ready to roast and, um, and our red bell peppers as well. So we're going to roast this until it's fork tender and they're delicious, it's caramelized and ready to help us make our sauce. Okay, I'll be right back when they're done. Okay, had a little change in plans along the way. I went ahead and uh, got some, might as well use the time that the oven is on and did some roasted garlic. I got my peppers all done and I did both sides of that. I decided, you know, this sauce is so good that I know I'm gonna wanna have it and I can actually freeze so, this as well. What I'm gonna do for so, you is show you how I'm gonna take care of these peppers. You can put these in a bowl and cover them, or I'm just going to pop them in a Ziploc while they're still hot and so, let them steam. There we go. Oh, it smells so good. Just got to love it. And then I'm going to get over to my cast iron skillet because I know that's where I'm going to be um, dealing with all of this and get my garlic up here on this. I'm gonna saute it with my onion. And this was a small to medium onion, just a yellow onion. Um, it's gonna all get pureed, so it, you're not gonna have any big chunks of anything. And now we've got the butternut squash. I'm gonna scoop out the filling. Mm. You're just basically gonna be taking the skin off of that. I've gotta let it cool a little bit though. I'm gonna take the skin off of these 
and they were fork tender. You're gonna take the skin off. Look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? Oh, I wanna eat that right now. Oh my gosh. That one's all caramelized and beautiful. So, and you can see how easy that pierces down into that flesh. So we're gonna take it all off of there, put it in here. Okay, I brought you back a little bit early because I do wanna go over a couple of things. We are gonna use butter. Um, maybe not, maybe I'll just use the grapeseed oil, but I do have, I've got this roasted garlic and I wanna make sure that I get that in here. I've got some fresh garlic as well, but you're just gonna pinch these cloves right out of there. Keep your skins out of the mix. Let me get a paper towel. I got peeled back all the skin off that squash and it's hard to stay out of it. It tastes so good. <laughs> so I just take and um, I drizzled some of that roasted garlic grapeseed oil over this after I cut the bulb or the, the whole thing open so it would expose the cloves inside. And you just want that soft garlic. It's gonna have a different level of flavor. It's not gonna be the same as the rest of it. Um, it's actually very sweet and caramelized, just like your squash and everything else. And so I just take, make sure I squeeze down all those little cloves, get those, pop those out of there, just like that. And it's really a healthy sauce because look at all the antioxidants and antibiotic properties this has got in it. Oop, I don't like that clove. Um, just from all the garlic and onion and everything. So that's going to go in there as well. And I didn't want you guys to miss out on how to do that or what to do with that. Skin will and disappear in the mix and become delicious. And we get all those charred roasted pieces in there. So let's go over to the stove and get this started. Gotta get our pasta water on. It's gonna be so amazing. And we're having uh, the protein in this is going to be um, chucker meat. Uh, my husband's been chucker hunting all winter and so uh, we have some chucker breast fillets that I've brined now for about an hour and um, we're gonna, by the time we get started, it'll be, you know, closer to two hours, but maybe an hour and a half. And that would be perfect for those little fillets. And we're gonna go ahead and cook those up as well in this sauce. It's gonna be delicious. All right, I'll be right Okay, back. so before we get over there to the stove, I've gotta take this meat and it brined in a, just a simple brine of uh, four cups of water to a quarter cup of sugar and a quarter cup of kosher salt. And that's all you need. Um, you can raise that up or down depending on the amount of meat. So these are these little chucker breast fillets. And they, we were gonna have them as cutlets, but I thought, you know, they'd be great to have in the sauce and they'll stay nice and moist um, because they can dry out. That's why I brine them. I wanna see if that makes a difference because um, they, it can dry out. And so I'm gonna brown these off first and start that layer of flavor and with the fawn that'll be left in the pan. And you wanna just cut these up in bite-sized pieces and yum, it'll be more than enough. In fact, this might be too many, but I don't think so. I don't do anything on a small scale, so <laughs> I don't know why I'd start now. Um, and this will be good, it'll be delicious leftover as well as tonight. So it's a great Sunday dinner. And I haven't seen anybody do this recipe, so, or anything like this. And I mean, I could be missing out, but um, haven't seen that. So I don't have anybody to give a shout out to. I do have a recipe that's coming up that I'm gonna be uh, shouting out a few people. Um, because I've seen it numerous times and every time I want to do it and I just haven't I haven't gotten around to it or I decided eh, I'll let them have the glory for now or whatever it is Not that this is glorified, but Anyways, you know what I mean. So we're gonna cut this up. 
I'll be back when I get this all done and I'm ready to brown it off in my cast iron bean pot. And we're ready to go and get this sauce on the road. Okay guys, I'm here, I'm getting ready to cook this. I'm so excited. Okay, it's a little prep work in the beginning. You've got to prep ahead, but I'm not, I'm not opposed to that. I'm gonna put about, because there's no fat on this chucker, I'm gonna put about two tablespoons of uh, the roasted garlic grapeseed oil from Wild Treat in my pan. You could use olive oil, you could use vegetable oil, you could use whatever you want. Um, you could use the butter flavor. I've got my pasta water is started over on the other burner um, for my tortellini. I'm really excited. This is going to be delicious. So I've got to reach up in here without getting in the camera view. <laughs> and I'll get this meat down here because my pan is already, already screaming hot. And I want to do this really quickly. I don't want it to, you know, get tough. So I'm really just putting a sear on it. It's going to cook super fast. It's such a lean meat and it just cooks really quickly. So you're not going to need a whole lot. And I'm going to add, just because I can, I'm going to put down a little bit of garlic, granulated garlic, because we have garlic going all the way through this. Might as well, don't stop there. Keep it going. Sorry if my arm's in the way. And then I want to grab a towel here to get a grip. Don't catch it on fire. So it's just a quick browning at a pretty, you know, medium-high temperature is what I want. And I'll be back when I get this all browned. I'm going to take it out of the pan, and then we're going to start on the deglazing and the rest of that sauce. I'll be right back. Okay, so now I've got my pan. I've taken the chucker back out. Um, get my burner lit again. Um, it actually had quite a bit of liquid in it, so it really didn't get browned at all, but I don't want to overcook it. I just cook it to the state of, I don't know how well you can see that, because of lighting, but I only really cook it to the state that it's just done. So it's not tough, it's not dried out, mm. and that, that brine, I don't know what it is, but it allows the meat to get absorb the actual seasonings better to me that could be my imagination it could be because I want it to be but huh, that being said I'm just gonna stick with my story now I'm gonna layer that roasted garlic again we do have a little bit of fond I don't know if you can see that but we got a little bit of fond on the bottom because I let that liquid evaporate and um, make it so that we can actually get some flavor out of that I've got some organic chicken stock and a cup of Chardonnay, which I'm going to use in this sauce as well. But right now, I've got my handy dandy, hopefully you can see that, um, scooper full of my medium to small onion and my garlic. And my garlic should be just fine because that onion's going to start that cooking first. And we'll just make sure we give it a good, we're not going to leave it in there too long. Because we don't want burnt, um, the bitter garlic. We just want to get this going. The onions should keep it cooler. I love cooking in cast iron. If you guys don't have any cast iron, I just totally recommend it. So now, right there, I can smell the garlic. I think I'm done. We've got some of that good bits off the bottom. Look at that. Starting to kind of caramelize even though it's not really ready to. But I, I don't want that pan's pretty hot. So we're going to put our cup of Chardonnay. You want to use a Chardonnay that you would drink. Now you can see that browning effect. You want to make sure that you use a Chardonnay that you would drink at the table or before dinner. Don't put don't use cooking sherry. Don't 
use the cheapest wine on the shelf unless you're willing to drink it um, I would use a nice Chardonnay or hey you could use a white wine you could use if you like it a little sweeter you could use a Riesling but I kinda like this combo myself <clears throat> so that being said, ooh, my water is boiling. So I'm gonna let this come up to a nice boil, start cooking some of that alcohol off, and then we're gonna add our um, veg, and then we'll measure out our chicken stock. So I'll bring you right back. I'm gonna get my tortellini on, and there we go. Well, maybe I won't put my tortellini on yet. Maybe I'll wait until this sauce is done. But my water's hot anyhow. Ooh, it's starting to come up to a boil right now. Maybe I won't have to shut you off. Let's keep it all real time. Okay. So, we've got, to recap, we've got a couple cloves of garlic in here. We've got a medium onion. We have the drippings that we cooked down and let evaporate that were on the bottom of the pan from the chucker meat. And chucker meat, I wish I could have you all over for a, a chucker feed because we've got, now we've got a ton of chucker in the freezer and I need to have a big fat chucker feed, maybe Super Bowl, but I think Super Bowl Sunday is um, also the last day of chucker hunting, so it'll be a real, um, I don't know what the boys are going to decide. Okay, so now we've got all that, all those good bits off the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and add some herbs to Provence in here because I want this in my sauce. I love this seasoning. And I'm going to add a good healthy teaspoon of that in my palm. I'm going to hold back on the salt, but I am going to add some pepper. Remember, we seasoned all of our vegetables, so it may or may not need it. Now we're going to get those veggies in there. And we've got the roasted garlic. We have the red bell peppers, it's just a great combination of everything that's going to go in here. And I'm going to dump this in little by little. Now we get the whole thing in. Oh, it smells so good. I just want to eat that squash right now. Put that dish in the sink. Okay. Now I can tell, right now I can tell you I need chicken stock. I think you guys can tell as well. We're gonna need some chicken stock in this. So we're gonna add a, a cup or so right now. Let's bring it up to kind of level with the amount of squash that's in here. And we'll stop, bring it up to a boil, and I'll bring you back when I see what I've got here. Okay, I'll be right okay, back. Okay guys. So I just want to fill you in on everything. This has been simmering at a pretty, I mean, I've got it on low, but it, you know, cast iron just holds that heat in so well. It's been on a hard simmer for about an hour. Um, we're getting really close to dinner time and I want to go ahead and finish this sauce. So now the squash is totally soft. Um, the peppers have let go of everything they're going to let go of and I can blend this up with the stick blender and I'm going to turn this into a creamy sauce. I did add a little more chicken stock so you guys don't think I'm uh, that's all I added and we're going to go ahead and go ahead and wes it up. Be very careful because if you pull this out it's going to splatter and it's hot just like that. in a blender if you didn't have a stick blender like I've got. I really want this nice and smooth. And creamy. Oh, look at that. It really is a beautiful consistency. Got one more thing though. Set this. Sorry if I bumped you. Let me get that 
Oh, there, here we go. You're gonna add some, I think it needs just a little bit more chicken stock because I, well, maybe not. No, I think it's a good saucy consistency, but now I need to pull it all together with some cream. I've got some heavy cream. I better do a taste test, make sure our seasoning is good before I put that cream in there. So let's taste that. Wow, that red pepper is delicious. You really didn't need any more than that perfect amount. One big spaghetti or um, butternut squash to mm, two of those peppers. Delicious. And you can taste that charred kind of roasted flavor. Mm. <laughs> it's really good. Okay, so I'm going to add some heavy cream. Not very much, about mm, four tablespoons at the most, I'm thinking. And I'm going to go ahead and get that mixed up. Okay. And I believe we are done. Release that stick blender from the... That in the sink and rinse that really quick. It's easier to clean if you just get it rinsed off right away. I'm going to do another taste test with another clean spoon here. See if I've got enough cream. If not, I'll stir in some more. Mm. I think it needs a little more. So another little uh, three, four tablespoons of cream. Probably more like two. How about I do the correct amount? There you go. And then get our serving spoon here. Uh, doesn't that look delicious? This creamy, rich butternut squash sauce. It's going to go down over our tortellini. Wait till you see this on the plate. You're just going to go, I want some because it's delicious. Okay, I do want to add a little bit more Herbs de Provence. Just a couple shakes, um, just to add that last layer in there. And then I'm gonna add my um, checker breast. Now you could use chicken breast, you could use quail, you could use um, rabbit meat, you could use any kind of, of a light, very lean meat. Um, I don't know that I would use sausage or beef in this. I think it's too light of a recipe, but we're going to let that heat through. Get our pasta on our plate, and I'm going to turn this off because it's really ready to go. So, um, but back to what I was saying. I think that if you used a beef, it would be, it's not, a, it's not hearty enough for that kind of meat. So I would think... Um, any kind of white meat, or you could keep this um, as vegetarian as possible and not add meat at all. Just add it over pasta and um, the cheese tortellini. This is a seven cheese tortellini, so I'll be right back when I'm plating it up and I'll show you what I have. Okay, the final results are finally in. I'm so excited. Okay, so I've got my cooked seven cheese tortellini. I just got that tortellini at Costco. We freeze that, it's easy for me to send with my husband. And then I have this beautiful oh, butternut squash sauce to go down over the tortellini. And I don't know about you, it's got chucker in there, but look at that. Maybe I should bring you in for a really good close up because you already know what it looks like far away. Let's do a close up and see what we got. We want to see that sauce go down. That's part of it, right? Mm hmm. I love it. Okay. You just want to cover all of that. Mm. There you go. And we are going to sprinkle down just about oh a tablespoon of fresh Italian parsley because it's pretty. <laughs> 
And then I've got some fresh Parmesan. I'm just going to snow some of that right over the top of this pasta. I don't know about you, but my mouth is watering. I cannot wait to taste this. And you want to get fresh, really good aged Parmigiano Reggiano. Parmigiano Reggiano. Anyway, don't make me sing. <laughs> Doesn't that look pretty? Who wouldn't want to have that? This is five star restaurant quality right here. I'm going to grab a piece of the checker meat because I want to taste that in the sauce. Mmm. Tortellini. Mm. Oh my gosh. Mm. Mm. Outstanding. I have to tell you, if this would be really good with fresh basil. I love fresh parsley though, but fresh chiffonade basil down over the top of this would be outstanding as well. You can taste that fresh herb just kind of letting go of its essential oils in the heat of the pasta and the sauce. The pasta is so much less acidic. I mean, it doesn't have that acid that the tomato-based pasta sauce has. You've got a little background of that wine that is reduced down and um, the roasted garlic, the fresh garlic, it's absolutely magnificent, and you can taste the roasted peppers as well as the roasted butternut. So I hope that this inspires you to try something new. Step outside the box you're in because this isn't that hard. It does take a little bit of time, but your family will think they landed in a five-star restaurant every single time you make this. And really and truly, it's healthy. Look how healthy this is. We get a winter squash in our diet, and nobody's ever going to know that's what that is. You could dress it up any way you want. Make it a little redder with more peppers um, if you wanted to, and they'll never know. Anyway, I hope it inspires you to come back. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you really like it, share it on your Facebook page and maybe, um, you know, inspire somebody else along the way to do something different. And as always, guys, oh, I hope I see you next.